Hey YouTube, yesterday I got a question from someone on YouTube on my video about being godly in an ungodly world and this question pertains to me and my husband and our marriage and what we allow and what we don't allow in our marriage, you know, sexually was the main question because, you know, being godly in an ungodly world you know, you have to have standards in your own home, you know, of what you're going to do in your own home and you have to establish these with your partner even before you get married of what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. Um, she had asked, the person that asked, if I had ever had sex before marriage and to be unfortunate, I did not wait until I was married to have sex. But that is because I did not have a relationship with God at all. Um, during my teenage years, um, growing up at all, I was raised in a family, in a Christian Catholic family, and, but I just, I wasn't going, I was just going through the motions, going to church, you know, kneeling with my mom and dad, acting like I was praying, you know, and I just, I wasn't, I wasn't in the right place, I was, I had, I was going through an eating disorder, um, suicide attempts, I mean, my life was messed up, I was, in the old cult and doing very dark things and of course my beliefs were not with the Bible and I did not care a thing about God. I did, didn't care, you know, whatever. Um, so yes, I was not a virgin when I got married, but um, my husband didn't, me and my husband were the first with each other. So that is sort of a good thing about it, I guess if you could say. Um, we did have sex before we got married because we dated for five years. So, um, in those five years, of course, we both weren't Christian and we did things that we shouldn't have done. And, but when we both came to Christ right before we got married, we knew what we were doing was wrong, so we stopped and then we waited until we got married. And why did we need, like, a marriage certificate to engage in sex? Again, it's because God established marriage as a gift and sacred between a husband and wife and him. And to make that vow in front of all your friends and family is very important. And it's just not about a piece of paper, you know, that you get legally here on earth. God says whatever you bound here on earth is bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth is loose in heaven. So we do have to follow the, follow the laws here, too. We can't just go around and, you know, make decisions based on reasoning. That's the way that Satan can get in the door and attack us, you know, and make us feel okay about certain things that, you know, aren't really morally right. And God talks a lot about fornication, which is sex before marriage, in the Bible, and how wrong it is and how he detests it. Because when you're not married, who knows if you're going to stay together, you know. So... Sex outside of marriage is very wrong in our opinion now to this day. And we want to, you know, enforce that on our ch on our child. Of course, our child has to always make their decisions for themselves. You know, we can't be with them 24-7. But that is what we believe. And, you know, we have asked God for forgiveness for that. And um, so, yeah. And another thing was she asked if we allowed nudity or pornography to come into our house. You know, between me and my husband, you know during sex or whatever, no. Um, me and my husband are strongly, strongly, strongly against pornography. Um, my husband detests it. I detest it. It is something that is very grotesque in both of our eyes. It is something that goes against what God made sex for. God made sex between a married woman and a married man. And to put your eyes on two other people that are having sex is just a disgrace and it is allowing it into your house if you're watching it on TV or you're watching some show like Desperate Housewives or something and you see an affair going on. That is allowing that into your house and that is allowing Satan into your house without even knowing it. And in both of our eyes, pornography is very wrong. Um, it's just taking the pleasure out of sex and that's all it's taking. It's not taking love. There's no love involved. It's very animalistic. I mean, you could watch the same thing on the Discovery Channel pretty much. It's, it's, it's disgusting to both of us. And, of course, we live in an ungodly world, and this is what has happened. This is what our world has come to, that people have to sell their bodies in order to make money. Um, 
it's very sad to both of us. And when me and my husband um, go out and we see, you know, pornographic signs or something, we will not go down that aisle. We will turn our eyes. Um, there is a great song, a great Christian song, uh, about, you know, we turn our eyes. It has a verse in it. We turn our eyes from evil things. Oh, Lord, we cast down our idols. Um, so we just make sure we turn our eyes from all that kind of stuff because it's very impure and it can and it can come into your mind and later on uh, subconsciously you, you can think about it have a dream about it and you start to lust and Jesus um, was very prominent when he said in I'll read a little bit when he said in Matthew uh, 5 chapter 5 verse 28 but I tell you, you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart so anyone who goes out and looks at a woman it looks at a woman or a man on TV having sex in pornography or in nudity in a film or looks at a girl or a guy out in public with, you know, that kind of lust in their heart. They have committed adultery. They are an adulterer at heart. So if you were to die and you are lusting, you have broken one of God's commandments. You are not just lusting in your heart. It's not just in your heart. To God, you have committed adultery. That's how serious this is to God. If you're right eye causes you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than your whole body to be thrown into hell. That is how serious God takes adultery and lust and sex outside of marriage. Is It would be better for you to remove both of your eyes if they are causing you to sin, if they are causing you to lust, than to keep on lusting and to keep on sinning. God does not, God takes sins seriously and especially sexual sin. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, it says, The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. So there's no room in our body for sexual immorality. God does not want to see that, and when he does, you know, we are following Satan. We are not friends of God. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, Verse 4, the wife's body does not belong to her alone, but also to her husband. In the same way, the husband's body does not belong to him alone, but also to the wife. Do not deprive each other except by mutual consent and for a time so that you can devote yourself to prayer. Then come together again so that Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. That is saying that my body does not just belong to me and I can do whatever I want. I can, you know, masturbate or any of that kind of stuff. We do not believe in that either because that to us is sexual sin. That is me going with myself and particip participating and thinking about lustful thoughts in an ungodly manner. Sex is meant for two people in a marriage between God to either create a child and to come together and love and celebrate each other's love, to celebrate each other's marriage. And sex is supposed to be an amazing thing, and it is an amazing thing when it's between two people that truly, truly love each other. So those are my opinions, and those are my hun husband's opinions. Actually, they're not just opinions. They're solid truth in this. And if you want to know more about marriage and sex and sex outside of marriage and porn and all that kind of stuff, read the Bible because it is the number one source for everything in life. So that's how we feel on that. And if you have any more questions, I'd love to answer them because I love talking about these topics. So thank you so much and bye.